fiction. Science fiction. Horror. Fantasy. Crime. LGBT. Thriller. You have now entered the House of Mystery. With your hosts, Eric Shapiro, David North Martino, John Copenhaver, and Al Warren. Heard on KCB 106.5 FM Los Angeles, 102.3 FM Riverside, and 105.0 AM Palm Springs. We are back in the House of Mystery, and uh, joining me today, I've got David North Martino, uh, the Virgin, and <laughs> hey, Al. he's coming Good along nicely. He's coming along nicely, and uh, and and today we've got uh, our guest is uh, he's he's kind of a an, a horror a horror author, I guess. <laughs> I don't know a horror. Um, Ian well, Kadena, isn't that how? Well, you're, Kadena, yes. I, well, I'm not a virgin, and uh, I, I, and I'm only a horror to my family and my and my my husband. <laughs> well, yeah, well, that's that's all that matters. Um, so it, it all started for you when you were um, a kid, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like I, I, I see that. I, I read your bio, and I'm just thinking that. Okay, so now you are. Um, you, you, it kind of sa- it says that you were focused on writing. And and giving uh, stories that you would play out with your action figures later. Oh, yes, <laughs> right. Yes. So, I, so right. Where, where does that? Where do you think that comes from? Like, did is that kind of something your parents did or what? Yeah. No. No. Not that. My mom's an avid reader, so actually, my dad is too. Uh, they just read totally different genres. Uh, uh, my mom's and mine kind of fall in the same area. She likes sci- sci-fi. And, and scary stuff stuff too so uh my dad you know more like you know you read stuff about golf or you know somebody's <laughs> baseball you know uh, memoir or something <laughs> like that uh so um but just as a kid i would always I, I i couldn't stand it when my friends would like mix their toys like you know they have their masters of the universe toys along with their gi joe toys and their star wars toys and they would you know have them interacting and i'm like like that doesn't make any sense like no i i think i I think i invented the first crossover as a kid because i said okay like you know all right so like maybe you know the you know skeletor casts this portal spell and he crosses over and okay now they can interact with like your gi joe toys and that kind of stuff because they come into that universe and you know and my friends are looking at me like what the the hell are you what's wrong with you you know like i'm crazy uh like you know whatever so um did you drink as a kid or something yeah (laughs) <laughs> no it probably sounds like i did although you know i did have a nickname in high school they used to call me sid because they were convinced i was on acid and i've never done drugs or anything <laughs> just because yeah so i would uh you know i had to have a plot or something for my for my action figures and for my toys you know so i would always i would when i was at school you know i'd sit there and so i was taking notes i was writing out you know storylines and and plots and script stuff for you know like my uh, gi joe toys and then i'd come home and i'd act him out and i even heard my brother telling my one of his friends one day like you know yeah he actually like writes this stuff out like you know like i was crazy um <laughs> so so i've always i've always written and uh then of course i ended up getting the dungeons and dragons and you know there's a you know there's all kinds of story stuff you can do with that and i would be the dungeon master which you know somebody told me sound like really perverted yeah. um once and, <laughs> well it depends um, on, on you know <laughs> Yeah, one of these, one of these, uh, yeah, one of these Facebook group, one of the persons comment like, "Oh, I thought you were talking about like S and M stuff," and I was yeah. like, oh, no. <laughs> "No, no, wrong group." Yeah, yeah. So yeah, but, I okay. Would, when, go ahead. But, I look at this right, and I see this. Okay, so you have this great imagination, and you're mm-hmm. focused on this, and, and I did the same thing, sort of. Um, not to the extent of you did, because I didn't really care about what other kids did with their toys. <laughs> right? I really didn't. I was sort of, um, but I, I was. Really, well, you were more tolerant than me. Uh, no, actually, no, because I, I think a lot of them didn't like me. I mean, I was, I because <laughs> no, I, I was an autistic kid, and in the '60s, that's like I was a weirdo. Okay. Gotcha. So, so I was quiet, and I hung out with my dogs and and my own toys, and 
whatever. Sure. It, it didn't matter to me is what I'm saying. But with that imagination you have, and then you go into Dungeons and Dragons. Yes. So you're creating that story. You're creating who the characters are, what they all So I get all that part. But it, it also says in your bio that you sort of uh, didn't, focus on school you weren't paying attention to the teacher you were focusing on your fantasies sort of world right which yes. is good i mean that's great that's creativity but when you start writing as an adult a little later in life um didn't you feel like you missed a lot of the grammar or structure or some of the education that you thought you needed and i ask <laughs> that only because i feel this way like i've gone back and learned things myself because I didn't get what I should have. And I don't blame that on teachers. I'm blaming it on me. Um, but with that uh, came a lot of um, time when I didn't feel very confident putting out work and sending it to publishers or people. There was, there was this lack of confidence. So sure. didn't you get that same feeling then? Uh, no, I mean, I, I, I did well in school. Uh, and that, not initially like in elementary, I, you know, thought I was stupid. So anyhow, yeah. um, uh, but when I actually got into college, I, I really enjoyed college. And then that's, I also ended up taking a, a, a bunch of English courses, uh, for fun. <laughs> I mean, I was, my, my, my theater, my, my, my major was theater. And, and then uh, I had to pick a minor like at the last minute and I had all these English courses and stuff. And so I was like, Oh, when I was looking at the criteria and so forth and writing seemed to, I, I could either like maybe just two different courses and I could either got an English minor or, or writing minor. And I said, I want to do writing because that's what I've, I've actually kind of done. So, um, and I took some really great classes and, you know, got learned a lot about, you know, writing stuff through that too. And so I, I felt pretty good about that part. And so I don't think I really missed out on any of that as far as the education part of it. It's just, you know, I, you know, during elementary and junior high, I just really didn't care about <laughs> Yeah. my studies and i wanted to yeah focus yeah. on my toys <laughs> well yeah you know i, I mean I, I i went into the theater as well in college i relate to that but um we shared our uh, main foyer with um the music uh, department as well in college mm -hmm. and there was a really hot guy there so i transferred into the music <laughs> program <laughs> why not of course absolutely it, it sounds crazy now but i ended up no, getting, it sounds getting perfect. i would have done that too if i had known yeah. yeah i went right through with it actually <laughs> I, I, I didn't get lucky with that one but i did go through and get my master's so it was uh oh wow okay it was a good move and it, it really clicked with me the music department was incredible and that's that was uh, one of the best times in my life um but when you leave after doing theater and stuff what what mm -hmm. what was the um the, the fire or the click or the hunger or what was it that you decided you know what i'm going to write a book and i'm going to put it out like what what was um, it that, that drew that caused that you know i think what caused that was that i i I actually tried to, you know, I went out to California and tried to pursue the whole acting business. And uh, obviously, you see how well that went over. Um, uh, and, you know, I was actually turned off of it by a lot of the stuff I saw when I was like, I was an extra in a bunch of uh, stuff and, and on set uh, for, for, you know, as an extra. And so I got to see a lot of stuff up front. And, you know, uh, of course, you could make the argument about doing theater as opposed to, you know, film. Uh, but in any case, I ended up, you know, having to move back. And uh, so I just you know, was like, you know, what am I going to do to, you know, get my creativity out? Because, you know, I wasn't sure about joining the local theater and that kind of stuff. And I just wasn't, just wasn't singing to me. And then um, I guess, so I don't know exactly how it started that I, I decided I, I needed to start writing. Uh, and I guess, you know, also at that time, I, I got, you know, I had figured out I was gay after I had moved back from, you know, California oh and all gosh. that. And so I had well, that's a bit late. <laughs> I know. I, had I known in college, gee whiz, I mean, I could have. Yeah. Oh, all the scenarios. Anywho, <laughs> could go on about that. All these missed opportunities are practically in my face, literally. Um, with some really hot guys, yeah. yeah but uh, oh gosh, I, yeah, I have like a yeah a dozen of those stories. Um, like, what <laughs> were you thinking? Like, I was like, McFly, McFly. You, you yeah. should be writing those stories under a different. <laughs> Pen name. Well, yeah, I, I, yeah, you know, I, I kind of, I, I wrote a blog post about that, but uh, yeah, I should uh, definitely, yeah, I probably put it in one of my books, The Hard Boys. Those guys are, you know, always, uh, those, those guys are, yeah, pornographic. So, uh, but, uh, 
Yeah, so I don't know exactly, but yeah, I decided I was going to write, I guess, a story about me coming out, and so I was, so I, I, that, I tried to, to do a, a, like, basically like a, a memoir, I suppose, or an autobiography, or what have you, and so I did get a, end up getting an agent out in New York at the time, and that was, you know, uh, I had a book proposal and all that stuff that I put together, and they were passing it around to, you know, Random House, and I was getting, they were showing me, sending me back my rejection, let their rejection letters they were getting from my, you know, and yeah. I was actually more thrilled like oh my god you know random house looked at my stuff and you know even though they rejected it i was just thrilled that they saw it so yeah um, they burned it but. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but, uh, you know eventually of course that that agent you know, well, they couldn't you know get me sold or anything so you know because who the heck is he and nobody knows who he is so we, and, and so they ended up dumping me which was fine i just you know was like well i really want to do fiction anyway you know and so um yeah i couldn't tell you specifically what made that click it's been so long now that i i but i ended yeah. up doing it and decided i was going to work on that so hmm. well it seems like okay so now you've gone into this uh, i guess what do you like to be called is it science fiction is it horror fantasy like where do you like to put yourself uh you know i i, I when i said fantasy is is pretty close to what i do i i when i hear fantasy i always think like uh you know, sword and sorcery stuff. Uh, right. That's more like Tolkien kind of setting or, you know, like some kind of Middle Earth kind of thing. And, and I don't really write that. So it's it's kind of paranormal where I got supernatural stuff. And so I guess the best term is like urban fantasy because I guess that's where you have like kind of that kind of magic but set in real world. So I always kind of say also maybe Harry Potter meets the X-Files because uh, I, I, I just kind of – like the supernatural stuff and uh but i don't always put it in a like a medieval kind of setting although in my or like i should say a tolkien-ish kind of setting because in my uh, nexus series there's two timelines going on one of them is in medieval times and so there is that hmm. but i i wonder so this is kind of this is the the tough question for you here sure now okay when you when you get into this area of writing and you say supernatural, paranormal sort of thing. So, and I understand this. So you had your own experiences with this, and you sort of you're into the tarot, you the out of body experiences, all this sort of. Oh stuff. yeah, yeah. So so yeah, but, much, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm I'm on it, man. But <laughs> so when you yourself have these personal experiences, and mm -hmm. I understand this, but so when you have these, um what gives you the courage to actually expose that in your writing? Because I know all writers do this. All writers have to, if you write something that's good, it's because it, there's something real in it. There's something touching. There's something that people relate to because it is real. So when you put yourself out there with these experiences, all of a sudden you're now exposed to the world. And that takes a lot of courage because, especially these days, because there's so much um, fight back with social media. Um, oh yeah, right. So yeah. you have to be very careful. So, but but when you do this, um, how do you know when? You, like I'm saying, so what gives you that courage, and how do you know when you feel like it's it's okay to do this? Well, that's that's. Uh, thanks for saying it that way because uh, I don't ever never really thought of it as courageous, but I, because it's easy for me only at that, I don't say easy, but it's never easy putting all your emotion out there for sure. Uh, but I think the way my brain is able to tackle it uh, with some kind of somewhat ease is that it's because first of all, it's a fiction book. And then I get to hide behind the characters, so to speak. So, you know, I'm basically not necessarily portraying it as myself even though obviously like you said that there's you know you're in like every character and it, it comes from me but i think my brain's able to like say you know i could always just easily deny and say listen i'm just trying to i'm just writing a character and i'm just writing a story so you know hey whatever um so there's that but th there are times where it's really hard for me to like you know uh get some of that emotion out and and, and put that on paper and so uh there there is some difficulty there, but overall, I, I'm able just to say, hey, it's a character, so it's easy to kind of get behind that. I've wondered, too, uh, with, with the paranormal, um, I've 
you know, uh, done my own research and been interested in it. And I was just wondering, do you take great pains to um, utilize like the research, um, or do you uh, do you use a lot of uh, like artistic uh, license when when creating a story that has paranormal elements in it? Uh, both. I I. I used to, uh, <laughs> I used to, for a while when I was in uh, Texas, I, I did run a, like a, a, we had a, what I call my little paranormal group. So we would go and investigate and do some stuff. Um, and so I, you know, I have, you know, researched a lot of that stuff and in, in, as far as uh, how to investigate it. And, 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 you know, I've done my own personal research, like with the tarot and, and so forth. So, uh, but I also do take my create, you know, creative liberties because I have to, I'm a writer. And so, you know, sometimes like, you know, we, you know, uh, the reality isn't that interesting. So of course you have to indulge and make it more interesting. So I have to take those liberties sometime. <laughs> so you're lying. <laughs> right. We call it fiction. <laughs> I, know, I had, cause I had someone say that to me years ago and they said, you know, um, they said to me this, uh, what did they say exactly? They said, Boy, you sure are brave putting yourself out there like that. And and I just sort of laughed it off. Kind of, in a way, I had the same opinion as you. And um, later mm-hmm. on, when it, I became a little bit more um, noticed, a little bit more sure. popular, wow, um, the nutballs and the things that I get called and said things to all the time oh gosh you you would you would just die if i showed you my email list and really and the thing is then that that what that person said to me it hits me now and it never hit me back then i just thought well that's funny you know not <laughs> nobody's going to say anything so so it 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 is something that will come back at you and i'm not trying to scare you <laughs> oh no yeah but i'm saying it's it, because you have to put some stuff in there that's real, something that comes oh, from yeah. you, that right. it, it does expose that to people that you don't even know. True. That's true. And, yeah, I I, I agree with you on that. And there are times where, you know, even if it's not something that's true or just, you know, you kind of, even though I have a character that's going to say something, I I, um, I think, like, Am I, am I really going to write this down? Because this might be a little bit too far, even though I can, you know, try and hide behind a character. <laughs> Should I really write this? Yeah. And uh, fortunately, I have a, an author friend that I can, I bounce and he's like, yeah, do it. And so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's, do it. it's Go me, for it. Him, right? right. But he's not there when you're getting this, this the heat. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. But uh, that's all I needed to hear, though. So, you yeah, know, I well, go ahead and do it anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. Well, it's just interesting to see where the process is in, in, in someone's head when they're writing and what they think about. And it's, I think it's okay. I think as long as you can keep that innocence in your mind and you can just write and kind of put it out there, I think that's great because it's when you focus on the outside noise that things can sure. fall apart, right? Because you right. start, you know, you, you no longer are focused on what you're writing. You're focused mm-hmm. on trying to get into – um, some sort of response with this. I mean, I, I used to do that the first a couple of years ago. I've been pretty good lately. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, I understand. I've, I've done that too. Like where, you know, I'm, a, I'm like, am I really going to, I mean, you, you, am I really going to put this out there? Am I really going to, you know, do this? And cause you know, some people are going to yeah say stuff and, and maybe not like it. And so, yeah, that's always a little bit scary. I always feel like, you know, every time I release a book, it should be like, you know, um, like the Dr. Frankenstein, it's alive or it's alive. That's yeah. what I should, you know, because, yeah. Do you, do you like those old, the old horror classics? Do you like the old, old I do. Rivers? I do. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of all that stuff. Yes. I'm, I'm huge. And yeah, I like all that stuff. I like to watch it. Yeah. I, I kind of thought so because I noticed one of your books, Meet Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I was thinking, but the, you know, it's like holy cow! There's the, the guy uh, on the cover is not Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm. A, yeah, I'm a huge. I, you know, I, I uh, I'm a huge uh, uh, Night Stalker, the Col- Kolchak, the Night Stalker fan. Uh, I used to, yeah, and I used to, I like Creature from the Black Lagoon. And I used to watch all those old, 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 old movies, and I, I'm a fan of all those, and even the sci-fi ones, and. Yeah, so, 
Yeah. So, of course, you know, that book series, I try and ham it up. It's total, you know, uh, not to be taken seriously at all. And it's a uh, complete filth and porn and it's erotica. And so, yeah, but it's a lot of fun to write. And it's, I have to, yeah, ton in cheek. And instead of meet Dr. Frankenstein, I meet Dr. Frankenseed. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, I don't know if, uh, you know, that should be made into a movie and then Sven, Sven <laughs> Gulli can put her on the You know, you know it, it oh. could be made into a porn movie, which is really funny because there are a couple of porns that I like a lot that really, they have uh, actually some halfway decent plot ideas. And so it's actually kind of, those are kind of my funny favorites. And so that's kind of what I had when I wrote this, uh, the, the Hard Boy series. So. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. You see, I, yeah, it's, I was going to say. So, so what I what I've learned so far about Ian is he watches <laughs> porn and <laughs> horror <laughs> movies, and he ends up writing Frankenstein. So it's hard yes, boy absolutely. series. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I I totally watch porn. I will admit it. I don't. I, I'm not too uh, shy. Yes, I, I I'll tell people that I do. <laughs> Well, it does, so does David, right? He's big yeah, time. Well, of course. <laughs> no, no, no. I meant to say no. <laughs> yeah, we know. We know what's going on. We know what's going on. And, and I do. I do put little Easter eggs, and actually, in all my little my writing. But uh, so I have the the next series, which of course is like urban fantasy and not the porn erotica. But uh, there are mentions of the hard boys in that and vice versa. There's hard boys come from Ravencrest, which is the city and uh, the, the, the make-believe town in the Nexus. So there's, I put little time so in case anybody happens to read uh, both my works, then uh, they, they can find some, you know, nice little tie-ins. Harbor, great. Is that near um, Atlantis where Wonder Woman's from? <laughs> <laughs> I believe so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. Well, we had a writer that dresses up like her, so I, you know. Uh, Wonder Woman. Yeah, okay. And, he's, and well. he's a teacher, so there you go. <laughs> just all of a sudden leaving all it right. at that. That's, that's cool. That's yeah. fine. So that could be a story. I'm um, sure. There's probably a lot of stories there. Yeah. So the Nexus. What is yes. the Nexus in your series? Like, what does that mean? Uh, it is the realm between... Death, uh, the real world, and then the afterlife. So it's it's um, kind of where all the magic originates and, and is, is stored there. So you have to pass through the nexus to get to the afterlife. And in the series, that has been sealed. And so what's happening to the dead souls? And so and what's happening to magic? That's why I explain that magic has left our real our world today is because it's been sealed off, you know, and it's been slowly trickled. That's why, um, you know, back in the medieval times, they had, you know, more talk about, you know, fairies and all that kind of stuff. And it's because the magic slowly bled away from, from the real world. And there's going to be repercussions for that. And so that's what the series is really about, is unleashing magic back in the world and, and should and should it. So Yeah. And you spell so it the magic way with the K, C-K, right? Correct. Right. So, so you're talking about um, the same magic as Hillary Clinton when she cooks babies. Uh, <laughs> uh, I didn't get that recipe book from her, uh, oh. but uh, uh, <laughs> well, it's just I just saw that in the news before, right? Because she was cooking babies <laughs> and eating it on in a pizza shop, right? And so, oh, and she, okay, was, well. she was doing that to get the magic from them. <laughs> <laughs> and they spelled it like that. So, uh, uh, did I, they I, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's why I was curious. I thought, well, maybe... oh, geez, yeah, no, I missed that. Uh, I think, wow, you just ruined my series now because now you're about <laughs> Hillary Clinton eating babies, and so, so <laughs> I'm going to start thinking about that. I might have to mention something in that. About yeah, that, you'll but... have to. That'll be for an update. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, and so when we go into Nexus, uh, mm -hmm. your characters, where do they come from? Uh, a lot of my characters, uh, I, well, obviously they're all going to have a little bit of me in there, but I, I kind of base, I do like to do like a rough character in my, the character in my head where, you know, I either take them from maybe, uh, a movie I've seen or, or, or some kind of book or something, but like, I know I have the, the sisters grim, which are, are like my favorite to write in that, and they're actually the fan favorite so far of that book series, uh, when I thought of them, they, I kind of thought about the Sanderson sisters, but meet the Golden Girls. So, um, you know, I'll just get my characters just from, you know, however, first of all, wherever the story dictates, you know, I, I will need 
um, you know, I need to, I'll just take it from there and kind of build and add characters in as, as, I'm, as I'm progressing with the plot. And so my characters come from all over. I mean, I, I'm, I don't uh, really try and base them off <clears throat> anybody I've personally met because I don't want anybody to get ticked off. But, uh, you know, I definitely have plenty of personalities I could, you know, choose from. I, and I worked in the medical field for, or I still worked in it for 27 years, but I don't work in clinic anymore. But I've dealt with, you know, thousands of patients. And so there's all kinds of, you know, characters I can uh, oh yeah. Know. Well, that's what, <laughs> well. I can imagine. I, but I, I could, because you know, right from when you were young, you were taking these, um, you know, these toys, and you were creating really a character for each of these toys, how they would behave. So, right. So you've been doing that. But I just wonder if it's um, so when you decide you're doing the Nexus and you're mm-hmm. developing characters, I just wonder if it's. Um, you know, someone you see at a coffee shop or someone you did work with or someone that that may be the the seed of it. I, you know, I, I, I know what you're saying. And I, I don't know that I uh, will start with a real person. Like I said, I try not to do that. I guess I will try and start with, first of all, you know, like, OK, I have to have my main character and I know he's going to be a kid or, you know, that. And and then. As I start injecting characters into the, you know, uh, you have to have his mom, but then maybe I'm going to fashion her kind of like this. And, you know, um, you know, it, it, it could come from really, I don't know, just uh, maybe somebody from my life, you know, I guess and there, there, there can be some that I and I just, of course, change the personality and then maybe think of them, try and put a face to them. Then I'll try and think of maybe somebody I, I saw in a movie or something just to help me you know, round it out in my head a little bit better and, and then kind of go from there. Not that I'm trying to copy characters off TV or anything like that. That's just kind of gives me a rough sketch, I guess, is the best way to put it. So if um, you use your, uh, your your theater and uh, acting background when um, kind of developing backstory, um, do, do oh, you yeah. use any of that experience? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I do th- that a lot. And, uh, I'll sit here and, and James is, you know, unfortunately seeing me do this where I'll be writing and I'm, you know, actually <laughs> going through the motions or I'm making these weird faces and he's just like, what's going on? What, what ha- what's happening? I'm like, Oh, I'm, you know, I'm putting myself in the character at the moment and I'm trying to figure <laughs> out how they're, you know, reacting and I'm trying to, you know, paint that so I can write it down well or, and yeah, so I probably look like a wacko when I'm, when I'm when <laughs> writing. And so, uh, yeah, so I definitely use a lot of my, my, my theater and acting background for that and try and, yeah, exactly, trying to develop their you're backstory. On, and- you're on Grinder <laughs> trying to figure out how that works. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you know, it makes me. Sweat left. Yeah. It's what's yeah. <laughs> So, wow. Or is it right? But how did, <laughs> that's why no, you know, that was even before me. So luckily I never had to do this right, right. So that was good old like manhunt days online. And it was AOL rooms. <laughs> but it, your character's through a series. Like how, it, it, this is always seems really strange to me. I mean, I'm always uh-huh. like nonfiction and, and things like that. True crime. Stuff. Gotcha. So, so I kind of know, about the person you find out about the person you know where they're going you know what happens and you kind of put it together but with yours so when you write the first book in a series like nexus yeah. and you have characters and stuff how do you continue them on like and i mean um so in the next book in the series something happens to some of these characters and new characters come in of course um do you have characters from the original that return later um, yeah, or do, I, I, go ahead. like, or do you just bring people in all out of the blue? Uh, there's, I try not to do out of the blue all all the time. I try to keep, you know, like I kind of think of it in my head, like a, uh, like a, like a series on TV. And so you have your, you know, your, your core group of characters there. And I try to build on their stories as I go along through the series and, and, and I try and tackle it that way. Uh, I do inject and add more characters, sure, but uh, I try to keep uh, my head thinking about the the main characters, and I have to really keep a, a, on the Nexus because there's like I think there's like because I actually did the audiobook for that one, and so I wrote down I think I had something like eighty something speaking parts in that. 
<laughs> it was 60 or 80. It was something ridiculous number. So there's like a lot of, so definitely I have a lot of characters. Um, and uh, so it, it is tough to try and keep, you know, track of that. Uh, so I definitely had to write a, 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 like a character list and I have to do that. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, but I'll add in characters and, and, but I try to stick with the main core of it, like I said, and, and, and try and build from there. And I, and I just think of it like a TV series where you, you have the same usual cast of characters and then you just uh, maybe you find out something new about them and, and or, you know, there's something else that, you know, somebody is introduced like in the second book, uh, um, you know, Joe, who runs the, the coffee shop and he's my uh, main Native American you know, uh, uh, character or whatever they call them now. I can never, you know, keep track of that. Uh, they, <laughs> He, uh, first nations. I don't know. I even mentioned that in the book because I just, I, that's, that's my cop out. Like, I don't know. So I just make light of it. And, uh, like, let me, that one of my characters just doesn't know what to call them because I don't know what to call them. So anyhow, uh, so his son comes in into the, in the second book. And so he, there's a brief, you know, he comes in briefly. And so, um, so there is some additional characters I will throw in here and there. Uh, I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just getting the process out of you. Yeah, I mean, so I'm going to copy it all and write my own book. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck copying my babble. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. Hey, so so what do the characters mean to you? And I say that because there's a lot. I, I ask. I've asked a lot of writers, and some say it, they, it's like their children. It's like I hear all sorts of answers. So, what are your characters to you? Uh, ooh, that's a good. Question. I don't know how to put that i mean i don't think with my kids i just you know uh, you have to care about all the main care all the characters I, i'd say that uh you have to care about them all because that makes them more real and for the reader and it makes it better to give them some kind of you know that's even no matter how minor they might be so um and they're definitely my creation you know so i don't know if i would you know, I guess I think of him as like a kid, but, uh, I mean, I had, you know, I actually, in the second book, I really did, I had to kill off one character that I didn't, I didn't actually see that coming. I, it just kind of happened in one of those moments where I'm like, oh my gosh, am I really going to take the book this way? Am I going to do this? And I was really sad about it, which I never thought I would actually be sad about killing like this. I killed plenty of characters before, but, um, you know, I had developed their relationship really well. And so I thought, um, so yeah, you, I mean, you care about them and, uh, but, I mean, I don't, I don't know how else to, to phrase it other than, yeah, well, I mean. Phrase it how you feel. That's, I just, you know, because like I said, I get all sorts of answers on that one. And, and like in David here, he, he hears voices in his head. So I do. Oh, <laughs> I transcribed them. Have you, have, you, have you started naming them? Do they have names? That's the oh, they all have names. <laughs> oh, do many, they? Na many names. <laughs> I tell him he needs to see someone about this, right? I, they start telling you. Hopefully not the one. Hopefully not one of the people in his head. He's not going to go see. Yeah, for yeah. well, that's exactly you know, it. He's driving down the road, going to run over someone because this voice told him, right? I mean, it's, it starts to get serious here. Okay? I mean, people, are, people are getting hurt. <laughs> well, I so, uh, well, I always say that I have to, you know, I, I can't really put on too much music or anything because it drowns out those voices. <laughs> you know, I, but, I, but, you know, the thing is I hear, like, the, um, uh, the, the rhythm of, of the language. Do you have – is it the same for you? Can you listen to music while you're writing? I can, yeah. I, I, I like to – I can have some music on in the background. Yeah, I'll have uh, – usually I do good with, like, a, a score kind of music that's yeah. – uh, yeah, so that 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 I can write with with that Indian. in the background. Yeah, I like I too. like the chaos. I love chaos. I my my dogs <laughs> running around, and I've got the TV. Yeah. T, I've got and I put old shows on. I've got one TV running with YouTube, and it's got you know it'll have old shows on there and old movies, and then I've got music music going, and then I'm writing. No, okay, well that works. I yeah, I, the I've chaos, got the TV on the background, so but the chaos puts me in a. Um, almost a stressed mood. Uh, uh, the anxiety in itself is creative for me. Mm, okay. So you like to write under stress then? Yeah, I think I, I feel the anxiety, and so it makes me... <laughs> <laughs> it, <laughs> you know, I'm writing about killers. Come on. It's, well, okay, yeah, I guess that, I mean, that would yeah, definitely put you in the, the mood for that, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not very romantic. 
Um, no. Do you ever kill off characters or that uh, or people you really know? Oh gosh, uh, <laughs> I really know. Well, you I don't want to mean. Or you, when I when who did uh, who was that? that was he's a, he's a J D Horn, uh, and and he's a, a big time writer, and he says that you know he'll be out and someone will cut him off, or he'll be in a store and something will you know someone's rude, he'll make that person into a character that he's going to kill off. Uh, I like that idea. I might uh, try yep. that next yeah. time. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. everybody shares. I think that's great. Uh, yeah. I'm just wondering if, you know, it's, uh, sometimes, you, it, because what it does, I guess, it, to him, it, it puts a face on someone that's doing something, and it's really the something that he, they're doing that he wants to kill off, I guess. Sure. Right? Well, I mean, I could think of, you know, cases where, yeah, there were people I wanted to kill off, and, uh, and yeah, I should probably, I, I never thought about making them one of my characters though i should i should do that on my next one uh, yes, that might yes. be uh that might be better <laughs> yeah the next the next baby magic killing you know yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll have hillary you know off one of my characters and put her in a pie or something or whatever. yeah yeah <laughs> her eyes looking out yes um, uh, yeah Alien abduction. So you've also got that in, involved in your. So so you kind of, you're making light of a lot of those in the Hard Boy series, right? Oh uh, yes, yes. Uh, I mean, yeah. What 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 did you want people to get out of that? Like what were you, <laughs> like what were you? Like, no, I mean that because you're putting together not just one book, but a series. And I guess yeah, okay. So there's the straightforward story, or and you said it's kind of you know Frankenstein and alien. You kind of got some some adult right. entertainment going on here. Sure. But was there something else you wanted out of that series that people to get? Uh you know, because I had kind of had toyed with the idea of you know writing some erotica but you know uh and i was a lot been in a, I'm a lot of uh, facebook groups and a lot of people that write they do write some of this kind of you know they put a lot of sex in there and they have paranormal stuff but it's all dark and, it, and it's all and it's good don't you know get me wrong uh but everything they have is first of all it's about vampires or, or werewolves and it's it's um, and it's all dark and, you know, bunch of blood and, you know, tragic tragedy stuff, you know, so it's all this sex and tragedy, you know, mixed together and I, and paranormal. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be, you know, I'm the type of person, I, I don't, I don't want to try and write something just to jump on the bandwagon. I, I will write something if I think I can contribute or make it different or make it interesting. And so I thought, well, all these people are writing all this paranormal, you know, kind of sex stuff, but it's all dark and, you know kind of you know tragic why don't does anybody just write something that's just fun just like you know these guys go out and investigate the paranormal and get laid and i thought hey i'll <laughs> i'll write it <laughs> so uh that's what really kind of was my idea it's like well let's just have some kind of fun where you know guys go out and investigate the paranormal so i have kind of a scooby-doo kind of tone to it and it's just you know uh i, I it's just something you can read and, and know that you know nobody's gonna get killed uh, and, and nobody's going to get, you know, you know, a bunch of blood and, you know, tore up or anything like that. It's just going to be, you know, alien and paranormal and crazy fun and, you know, a bunch of sex. And, and there's going to yeah. be a storyline in there, too. So it keeps, you know, the action going. <laughs> Scooby-Doo, we just had someone on that was influenced. Who was your, who, who, which character do you want to be? Uh, Veronica? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that joke just does not work for me. I'm just not, not going to. I'm not going to use it anymore. I'm done. <laughs> now, okay, Nexus, Nexus. Yeah. So, uh, someone picks up Nexus, and mm -hmm. uh, what is it you want them out of, to get out of that book? The first book? Um. So I, I, my thing with that book is really I wanted to to explain really. Uh, a lot about um, uh, the holidays and, you know, how they've come back to, because there's a lot of the uh, uh, explanation of, I did I wanted to explain how the, the holidays came about. And so I put that in, you know, like, you know, uh, people call it Sam Hain, but it's Sal Wynn and, and the real history of that. And like, you know, Christmas or Yule and, you know, one of my, pet peeves is when people say Jesus is the reason for the season. It's like, no, that's not true. <laughs> Let me go in. It's like, reason is the reason for the propaganda, but I'm getting started. Yeah. Anyhow, so I thought, you know, and I can do it because there's 
there's there's a lot of you know Celtic and um, backstory and and with history and then it's there's a lot of kind of I guess uh, you know old world magic and 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 in these holidays and that stuff and the traditions and how they came about and you know you know old time beliefs and that were you know were superstitious and so that just kind of seemed to fit my uh, theme of you know writing about you know paranormal or supernatural stuff and and so I thought well I just kind of explain in of course you know taking liberties nothing's not you know accurately historically but uh, it kind of really explain some of the real world origins uh, of of the holidays because uh, a lot of books you know when they do like you know uh, Harry Potter like they will have something and she'll mention something about them at Halloween and it's only like a brief you know note about it and there's no great focus on that so I thought why well, just focus kind of on the holidays during and uh, and at the same time I, th- this book series is going to be four books and it's centered of course around Max who's you know just moved to a new town and has a birthday and so I'm going to I remember, you know, a year being like, you know, uh, like uh, a long, long time when I was a kid. Uh, so basically every book is going to represent a season and explain the holiday with those seasons. And so everything's going to kind of come full circle. So the, really the whole book is going to take place within a year of Max moving to Ravencrest. And so the, I start with fall, which is Halloween, my favorite holiday. And then, of course, went into the winter, which is Yule. So and then I'll continue on with that. But I... That was really I really wanted to get across was, you know, explaining some historical act, put some real historical uh, perspective on the, the holidays and where they came from. And, and so so Max is a young kid at the beginning. Um, yes. So, Max, what is what who is that? Who, like, who would you describe Max as? Uh, well, there's a lot of me of him when he was a kid, you know. Uh, there's a coming of age story in there and, you know, he doesn't know he was, he's gay and, and he will deny that too. And, and that, uh, I never, I didn't figure it out until I was like 23. Uh, so, uh, mm. there's a lot of him. Yeah. There's a lot of me and him uh, growing uh, in that story. Um, and he's, of course I make him a little bit more complicated than that. So, uh, <laughs> Well, I can't give it away completely, but uh, give it away. Well, I just I was interested in the character of Max. So it, so a lot of it comes from yourself. So again, you're mm-hmm. kind of you're kind of um, exposing yourself to the world. Yeah, absolutely. Especially especially, especially with him, I say that, but then I know some stuff about him, so I'm like, well, maybe not that part, but <laughs> so, <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, again, I can't give it away. But anyhow, but he he's got a lot of uh, uh yeah yeah he's got a lot of figuring out them stuff to do. And in, in the story, he's, you know, uh, his parents have gone through a divorce and, and my parents are still together. So that part's not true at all. But, uh, and then his, his mother blames him for the divorce. And so that's part of his uh, baggage, but then there's more to that. And that, uh, so he's, mm-hmm. uh, a, 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 he's a kind of a tragic character, but not. So <laughs> he's got some depth to him. We'll say that. Yeah. Ravencrest. Now, do you write that, location as a character uh you know what that's a good question and now that you say yeah i do kind of think of it like that i do uh think of it as a place that's maybe got its own little personality and the people in the town contribute to that and uh i made it ravencrest vermont i'm a fictitious you know uh town yeah mayberry rfd Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Barney Fife. Um, yeah. yeah. So what? One of those, I think, in there. I well, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. What yeah. What's next for you? So, where are you going to go? Are you going to do more in this series? I think you've got two out now, right? I have two out. Yeah. And so I have two more to write. So that'll be the that'll be, yeah, quite you know fun to get done. So uh, I'm working on something right now that I'm trying to get out of the way. <laughs> out of the way, I say that, but. Uh, uh, and as soon as it, I'm finished with that, then I'll, I'll get back to the Nexus. So, um, yeah, so it, it's, it'll be in, go ahead. I was just going to say, so what, so you're, you, are you ever going to change what you write? Like this, this sort of style that you're writing, you're kind of in this sci-fi and, or you say urban fantasy sort of thing. Do you ever think you'll go into another style of writing? I, I do in that I will, uh, I'm already exploring one of the things I'm going to do, and I'll do it under a pen name, but I'm going to try something in a kind of, and I have this idea, so I'll, I'll throw it at you, but I'm, I'm going to try and write something along the steampunk uh, genre. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. I, 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 you know, again, it, it all seems so alien to me. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> Not alien abduction to you, but alien. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, I just don't know, you know, when, when people write with characters and stuff that they create. It just seems so distant. I um, I don't know. I, I don't know how, if I could ever do that. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, you know, I mean, I guess you have to, when you, you cause you write uh, about real stuff. So I guess in a way you, maybe you, you have to, you, you put yourself in that personality of the, I guess, whoever it is. Yeah. I, I, I go to meet the killer and I go to meet the, the, the mm-hmm. survivors and I go to meet all of the, the players, the cops, the, the doctors, whoever. Sure. And then I kind of, um, go from there and sure um, and that's kind of what you do when you're writing fiction characters too so you kind of get an idea of where what kind of person i might need a cop and then maybe you can think of like that experience you just kind of you know some of the cops you met and kind of you know meld them or mold them from there i don't want to talk about that (laughs) (laughs) that's a different type of book when i start uh, talking about the the man in uniform yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I can't, can't kick my mind out of the gutter then. That's my gutter, <laughs> the gutter series. <laughs> there you go. You call Pen the name Anita boy. Man. Yeah. The, the hard boys meet the gutter boys. There yeah. we go. <laughs> Crossover. Yeah. You know, yes, uh, yes, yes. I'm all yes. about that. <laughs> yeah. Assume the position. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm just. Uh, Going to hell fast here. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's talk about your website and stuff. Do you have a website? Do you have a place people can come and find you and send you love letters? Absolutely. It's uh, uh, just my name. is uh, iancadena.com. Great. And mm. we'll put that up on our website as well so people can uh, find you easy and stuff like that. And uh, um, Grinder or anything like that? <laughs> no, no, no grinder. I, I am on Twitter, but I don't get on there very too often. I, I have a Facebook page and I have the links on, on my website. So, um, and I'm, um, yeah, mainly, yeah. Sorry, on my... sorry, your fans out there, sorry, you know. <laughs> sorry about that. You know. Hey, has, hey what, did you notice that during the pandemic or the last year and a bit, you know, there's, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on and, mm-hmm. you know, just it seems like everything's out of control and wacko um does that affect your writing uh no no it doesn't hmm, uh okay. i always said i was like built for this pandemic because i just i don't like i never like big crowds to begin with and it would always irritate me when you know you go into a restaurant and you know there's the one table there and then there's you know um, like they sit us at a table and there's like all these other tables and they got to sit somebody right next to you i mean yeah, i know they do that for their servers and stuff but it just that's drove me nuts to begin with or you know when you're at the gym and there's 20 you know treadmills literally open and and the person's got to come and get right next to me on the treadmill like you know um i i wanted everybody to social distance for me you know ages ago so uh uh it hasn't affected me that much as far as yeah um my writing and i i you know i usually stay home most of the time anyhow and so uh yeah i i I've, yeah. I've done great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you hate people, we know. Um, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, as long as they stay away from me, I'm okay. Yeah. No, it's the same thing when you park way out in the park in a parking lot so that no one parks beside you and you come back and there's like three people parked. Beside yep. You. Yep. They, they, they do that at the gym too. Drive me crazy. Anyhow. Well, I've never been to a gym. I would. <laughs> <laughs> if I was at a gym, I wouldn't leave the showers. <laughs> Boy, see, I told you, I'm yeah. Satan. So, what's your favorite thing to watch, or do do you like watching movies and horror movies? And if you do, or sci-fi, do you like watching the old ones, or or do you like modern ones? I like most of the old ones. Uh, modern, I mean, and say modern, you know, maybe you know, well, you know, twenty years ago too. <laughs> I mean, lately, like most of the stuff that comes out, you know, it's just you know. It's they're all like a formula rehash and it's more like, you know, they got to, you know, build out a PC list as opposed to a story first. But uh, and like the horror now, like most of it's all just gore, you know, yeah. no story or anything. So um, I'm not a fan of that. Uh, yeah. Like well, my biggest. True. Yeah. Because yeah, like my biggest pet peeve, like with the, the horror movies, and they start off with a quick, you know, horrific scene. OK. And then it's just like there's a soap opera. 
you know, you're like watching, you know, like something on the WB or whatever. And then that's like, like that's almost like, Oh, I'm that's right. We're doing a horror movie. The last 10 minutes, like let's put more gore in here. And, and, and people just like, it's, that's awesome. That's like the greatest horror movie ever. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> You know, at least, you know, like with the Jason movies and the, the Friday the 13th, you know, you, you, you got, you know, mayhem and murder all through. But you got some story, too, along as you're going. They, 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 they spread it out and throughout the, you know, throughout the show, you know. So uh, th- those were all actually pretty good. Uh, what, so Godzilla versus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's that? Um, <laughs> have you seen the new Godzilla movie? The, the oh the new one that's like on the HBO Max or whatever I haven't seen that one yet but yeah it's most terrible. of the time Don't. I'm sure it is I mean they, <laughs> they they can never do Godzilla right you know it's more yeah. like you know God, Godzilla makes an appearance you know here and there uh, in most of the movies I and, think they focus too much on the graphic like it's it, you know their it, their effects are so good and so right mesmerizing yeah, and that's what people are following they don't need story they don't want to. Right. Everyone wants to watch a cartoon. Just like, you know, oh, I just want to see all these cool graphics. And then, you know, maybe there's a maybe there's a story in there, but they don't. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I, I just that, that drives me nuts. So I usually I like more of the older stuff because I haven't and, you know, I haven't seen anything recent that has piqued my interest as far as really good. Well, you know, Sven Gulli's on tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, do you like the? Are you into the sci-fi, into the superheroes, and all that stuff, or you just stay away from that? Uh, uh, no, I'm into all that. I'm, I I was into superheroes a long. I'm now I've actually, you know, have been saturated with zero. I mean, I was like so thrilled when they first came out the first, you know, you know, uh, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man because I'm a, I was a huge Spider-Man fan uh, growing up, and I just loved the comics and and. And they have now successfully managed to, you know, make me sick of superheroes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, a superhero saturation is just like, okay, I never thought I'd see the day that I'd be like, you know, I'm sick of that crap. Um, oh, but, okay. they're, they're, but they did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I always get bothered. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just a weirdo because I'm still mad at, or at um, Wonder Woman. You know, and and how she uh-huh. has an accent when she's old, but not when she's a kid. When they do the flashbacks, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that yeah. bothers me, and it shouldn't, right? That's silly. But well, you know, I mean, I get really annoyed because they can never do the Spidey sense right in any of the movies. They never get it right. They get it right maybe for like one scene, and that's it. And then the rest, it's like you know, it's not there, and it drives me crazy. Um, Is that like blue ball spidey sense? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But, uh, <laughs> that's the that's the spidey tingle. That's what you're spidey oh. tingle. <laughs> My spidey senses are tingling. That's what he means. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now I understand what he's trying to say there. Now yeah. I'm getting that. Now I know. Now I know. Peter it. Tingle. The Peter Tingle, yes. <laughs> I will say I do, I do like the new ones with Tom Holland, though. I I have enjoyed those. Well, I'll still I can still find stuff wrong with it, but anyway, I'll, I'll overall I enjoy it though. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, but most of the, the the superhero stuff I'm just over now. So you know, yeah, too yeah. much, too much. Yeah, way too much. Um, but anyway, well, it's been a great time. Um, thank yeah, you well, for thank- being on the show. Um, our and guest thanks for having me. Is the one and only uh, writer of Frankenseed. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, the Nexus, of course, but you know, Frankenseed is the one you want. Okay? <laughs> That's the second one. Alien Abduction is actually the first one in that series. So yeah, but I want to get right to the seed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, go for it. Right. Yeah, well, that's your prerogative. Go for yeah, it. <laughs> I'm an adult here. I, I'm 59. I need seed. <laughs> you know, the time I don't of even ma- know what to say to follow up to that. That's well, the time of making there. things wait is just I don't have the time. Okay. <laughs> 20 years, I'm going to be drooling in an old age home. So come on. Just think, the next time somebody says they planted a seed, you're going to say, actually, they planted a Franken seed. They did. (laughs) (laughs) And they're going to do it again. (laughs) (laughs) So our guest, Ian Kadena, um, Texas man now in New York. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Ian. To find out more about our show, guests, or to listen to past shows from our archive, please go to www.houseofmysteryradio.com.
mission has been completed. The end. By George, he's got it. It is the end. I'll see you. If you're lying to me, I'll be back. This has been a production of Something Weird Media. 